What if Deku was the reincarnation of Meliodas? This is one of those videos that is 9 times out of 10 done poorly or simply not finished. So I set out to do just that and so I bring you guys the completed story of what if Deku had Meliodas' powers. And if you guys want to check out another video after this, you guys can watch what if Deku had Naruto's powers, which I also just dropped. That being said, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. We start our story in the perspective of Hisashi Midoriya telling Izuku that he hates him and how it's his fault that his mother Inko had died, that if he wasn't born, she would still be alive. Now obviously that's a strange statement to hear the father of Izuku Midoriya make seeing as he's almost never in the story of My Hero Academia, but this story isn't actually going to be having the best upbringing for Midoriya as many of my other stories. He's not going to be the popular kid with a powerful quirk and he's actually going to be having one of the toughest upbringings that I will probably do on the series. Not going to be nothing too crazy to the point where you won't be able to listen to it if you're younger, but it definitely isn't going to be happy. So keep that in mind. That said, the reasoning that Isashi hates Izuku is due to the fact that because Izuku was born, Inko lost her life. Izuku being born was actually killing her slowly because of the fact that Izuku is, well, a demon. Izuku's birth was pretty much having a detrimental effect on Inko's well-being and her health overall, and it slowly dwindled down leading to Inko actually being forced to either choose between the life of her baby inside of her or her own. And she knew the sacrifice she was going to be having to make as well as Hisashi. But at first, Hisashi was a proud parent, knowing that this is what Inko and himself would have wanted. But as the years went by, Hisashi ended up getting fired from his job for not being able to attend as many hours as he could before with Inko being around. And now, Hisashi is currently looking for other jobs. Apparently at this moment, he's still happy with Izuku, he's still bringing him joy, and he's still talking to him every single day, telling Izuku not to worry, that they're going to be having a, a amazing house just like the one that they had before, and that they'll have hot running water once again someday, telling Izuku not to worry his pretty little head about it, pause, as, you know, Izuku just looks to his father and is like, alright dad, I believe you. You know, do what you gotta do, dad. So eventually, as time goes on, Izuku and Asashi struggle more and more. And with Izuku in daycare being a thing, seeing as he's barely about four years old or three years old at the time that Asashi was still nice, slowly over time, after more and more months of struggling, Hisashi ended up kind of developing anger and hatred for his son due to the fact that it made him struggle. And Hisashi was having trouble staying afloat. With all the things that had changed in his life so rapidly, he wasn't adjusted to everything and so Hisashi blamed Izuku thinking that if he wasn't born he'd be in a better place in life so what did Hisashi do he ends up telling Izuku that he's going to be taking him to a nice park and that Izuku won't have to worry about things anymore Izuku looks to his father and thanks him and he goes off to get Izuku a happy meal from Mickey D's right Izuku goes he gets his little all my action figure and he's feeling happy you know what could possibly go wrong at this current moment, Izuku didn't even live in the same neighborhood as Bakugo, so he hasn't even known of his existence, and so Izuku is pretty much just going through life aimlessly, trying his absolute best to pretty much just be, you know, happy with his dad, they're having a good day, and suddenly, Hisashi tells Izuku that, you know, they're here. Izuku looks outside the window and sees this strange orphanage place and he's like, hey, what are we doing here? Hisashi looks to Izuku and tells him to get out. And Izuku looks back at his dad asking what he means. You know, isn't he going to get out with him? Hisashi tells him that ever since he was born, he's made his life a living hell. That he hates him and that this is the last thing he was going to do for him. Telling him to get out now before he has to force him out. Izuku suddenly opens the door to his car and with tears in his eyes would forcefully get out as suddenly minutes would go by and the lady inside would take Izuku in. 
Izuku would now be inside of the doorstep of an orphanage and now was being forced to live among other orphan kids and keep in mind these kids already have established groups and friendships and they don't just want to welcome this new kid because that means more competition. If you really think about it being in an orphanage is just competition on competition and that's how these kids are viewing it. Not to mention that this kid has a powerful quirk, they're trying to do their best to keep this kid down. So Izuku would live the first couple of his years being alive, being shunned. And now, Izuku is in an orphanage getting picked on by being called names and being pushed aside by all the other kids who want to establish their superiority over Izuku, claiming and thinking that if they make other people think that they're superior to him, then everybody will like them more. But that's not how everybody else was viewing things and so Izuku slowly started just pretty much developing this understanding for how life was going to be from now on. Understanding that it's better to just stay quiet and not do anything than to use his quirk that he can barely control to fight back because Izuku knows that he has a powerful quirk and he was told by the doctors themselves that if he was to hone this strange quirk of his he could one day become a very very powerful hero saying that Izuku has a ton of potential and that someday he's definitely gonna get the chance to realize this said potential. That said, this goes on for about three years, and Izuku just gets used to it, obviously knowing that he's probably never going to be adopted, because at this point, all the kids in the orphanage are used to calling him a demon, telling him that he's worthless, telling him that he's nothing, and the name Deku would have even been created for him. And as badly as it hurts, everybody would pretty much be against him. Eventually, one day when Deku was seven years old, it would all be too much for him, and it's this day that Izuku would actually be kicked out from the orphanage the only place that he has for shelter because the other kids were actually picking on him and beating him up on this day way worse than usual now obviously izuku's used to the name calling the shoving but these kids were practically beating him and leaving bruises on him it was not okay so izuku lost his temper and then everything just went blank to him it was as if his primal instincts took over and Izuku began to essentially begin beating on these kids, showing his demonic wings, his eyes would change colors, he would gain a strange marking on his head and he would then suddenly stand up as wings would appear on each one of his arms as he would flail the, them around and choke the kids, holding them up with one arm, letting them know that he's not going to be taking it anymore. Izuku would be so close to killing one of them until eventually one of the staff members would come in, grab Izuku and tell him to stop, the only staff member that ever cared for Izuku. He would slowly begin to regain consciousness and when he does and he sees what he had just done, he would realize what his fate is going to be now. Izuku would be kicked out of the orphanage for having a dangerous quirk and being a dangerous person overall and it's on this day that Izuku would end up adopting the quote unquote Meliodas personality. And what do I mean by that? The go lucky barkeeping personality that Meliodas shows in the Seven Deadly Sin series, just due to the fact that he now knows that he needs to keep his emotions in check because his quirk will go haywire and it will make Izuku act in a way that not even he would wish to act ever. One day, he essentially finds himself wandering the streets about two days later and he would find a small abandoned apartment with one entrance on top of a roof that pretty much a tree, uh, a, a huge tree climb is the only thing that would lead him there. Only ludicrous people would try to break into that place because it was at such a high place in the in the city and nobody would have really tried to get there just due to the fact of how difficult it would be to actually get there. So Izuku knowing this would begin climbing that tree and fail a couple of times injuring himself but his resolve would be too great and eventually he would make it inside. Now keep in mind, Izuku is about 7 years old but he has to live here because it's either this or the streets with nobody helping him because heroes were supposedly gonna come or at least that's what everybody would tell themselves when they would see this quirkless or sorry not quirkless kid but this helpless kid on the streets. Everybody would simply think a hero will come, a hero will come but the hero never came or at least not yet. Essentially, Izuku would begin working on this house of himself, right? He would begin to clean it, going off and pretty much stealing a broom, stealing a bunch of cleaning supplies and essentially 
making it known that Izuku was going to try to fix up this little, you know, like wreck of a place. It had roaches, but Izuku decided that that was better than living out on the street, not knowing where he was going to sleep at night. And there was even an old abandoned mattress, which Izuku decided that that's what he was going to have to deal with. Izuku decided to essentially begin cleaning the place and so he did. He got it in a decent shape, it still looked horrible, but Izuku was now in livable conditions, right? Izuku ended up pretty much being at this place days and days and days, and eventually one day would come across a gang of random people who Izuku had not recognized. He would be in the park looking for random, you know, looking for anything at all that he could potentially use for help, maybe finding anybody and begging for money or something like that, or honestly just having fun. Izuku was just trying to play for one of the first time in years. And Izuku was suddenly approached by these gang members, right? Which would essentially offer Izuku a job and money because Izuku will now essentially be part of this uh, you know, gang of criminals, which essentially are going to be using him to pretty much move around the goods, if you know what I mean. So Izuku, since he's a kid, nobody would suspect that some little kid would be the one selling things. But he would go around and give people things in these teddy bears, right? And, you know, inside would be the bag of the goods and the people would just hand him money. Izuku would have a teddy bear stand where he would sell people things and he would kind of refuse to sell certain people things, saying that it's placed orders right so izuku now had this thing going for him where izuku now found himself in a brand new home surrounded by people that he thought he could trust people that izuku called family now because they're the only people in his life who care about him even a bit and now with this small amount of money that izuku was able to gather he was able to save up just enough to finally begin buying his own cleaning supplies and bringing the place that he lives at back to tip top shape eventually he ends up pretty much realizing that if he could ask these guys to help him out with a certain project maybe he could help his broken down home just a little bit more he would ask them to pretty much instead of paying him maybe help him paint the inside of his house and they laugh at him and telling him that they're not not there for manual labor they pay him not the other way around so izuku simply thinks to himself that if he can't do that then he'll have to figure it out himself he goes on youtube and begins to essentially begin googling and binging how exactly he can make his way around you know painting and decorating his place so that it doesn't look like such a hunk of junk right and eventually the day would come when izuku would be going through one of the operations midnight and one of the people would have let things loose eventually the heroes would have essentially caught wind of this strange operation and a few months into it they would be busted by a hero by the name of eraser head and now, Izuku has two decisions he can make. Number one, he could run away and abandon the only people that have given him any money, hope, and, you know, honestly, a chance in the world. Or, Izuku could fight alongside them. Izuku's emotions were torn, and he doesn't know which side to, you know, join the hero side, which obviously is in the right, or the people who actually cared about him, even slightly. Izuku just blacks out and suddenly it appears that now Izuku is in his demonic state. Izuku eventually goes on to fly towards the direction of Aizawa and punch him straight into a wall, leading Aizawa to cough out blood and more heroes to be aware of this situation. Eventually more and more people would go to this area and they would begin fighting against this gang of members who all had powerful quirks mind you and Izuku who was actually the strongest of all of them little did the rest of them know. But Izuku would continue fighting, and this would eventually gather the attention of one of the number one heroes in the world, All Might. He comes flying in, telling everybody not to fear, for he is here. And suddenly, he would begin lunging towards the direction of Izuku as he throws a punch very powerful at him, setting him flying back slightly. Izuku covers it with both hands and rushes back with his demonic state, simply flailing around in much of a Meliodas fashion as he flies up into the air and lunges back down in a bird-like style as he punches All Might and just begins landing blow after blow after blow. All Might grabs Izuku by the arm and then punches Izuku's face so hard that his arm literally lets go of his body. And All Might, after seeing what he had just done, would immediately be sorry for it. But Izuku's arm would come flying back onto him as it reattached to his body. And Izuku just kicks All Might away. Suddenly, we then have Aizawa restraining Izuku with his scarf and All Might coming in. 
only to land the finishing blow, which would knock Izuku out temporarily, mind you. And then they were finally able to restrain all of the other remaining villains. It's at this point that Izuku would find himself in a different location than what he was used to. And when he wakes up, he finds himself inside of a jail cell. Izuku doesn't remember what happened, his memories are hazy, but Aizawa standing before him with All Might right next to him playing good cop, bad cop. I'm pretty sure you guys could assume who's the good cop, obviously it's Aizawa, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not Aizawa, but you guys know what I mean, right? Aizawa's gonna pretty much talk to Izuku and ask him what he was doing affiliated with those criminals. Izuku goes on to say that he had no choice, that that's the only way he could have made any money. A kid like him alone on the streets doesn't have many options when no Nobody's willing to give you a job because you're too young and no hero's willing to help you. Aizawa, after hearing this come from the mouth of Izuku, just simply looks looks back and Izuku just has these dead eyes and this expression that just tells a hundred stories. Looking at Aizawa, he tells him that it's all fun and games to have so many heroes around until eventually so many heroes are there that normal people begin to think that only heroes can solve problems. Izuku looks to Aizawa and tells him that ever since he can remember, he had been beaten down by life. And these were the only people who gave even a slither of care for him, that all Izuku Izuku has were them and that that's the reason he was affiliated with them. That's how he survives. It wasn't a matter of what he wanted to do, saying that while he admires heroes, they only cared for him and they were the only people in his life that he could count on. Aizawa, after hearing this from Izuku, would look to All Might as All Might would pretty much begin like saying that that's a sad story, but you know, he could have came to the heroes directly. Izuku would say he tried. He went up to some flame hero who just pushed him aside and set to get lost. And All Might immediately recognized what that meant. Suddenly, Aizawa would see a bit of a resemblance to himself when he was young, just sad and uncaring. Because now Izuku, even though he had that personality of happy-go-lucky on the outside, this was how he truly felt. And Izuku now suddenly was hit with just jail time, so now he stopped caring. Izuku suddenly looked towards the direction of Aizawa and asked, so what happens now? He's gonna rot in jail for the rest of his life? He doesn't care. At least now he'll have consistent food on the table, somewhere to sleep, and maybe might be able to make some friends in there. Aizawa looks to Deku and says that maybe not. Maybe there is hope for him yet saying that there was a lot of potential with Izuku's quirk, asking him what that was, saying that not even he was able to turn off his quirk, and that he even managed to give All Might a run for his money. But he's unsure. He asked the kid what he would be willing to do for a clean slate, and Izuku would look back to Aizawa as he simply says, anything. Aizawa looks to Izuku as he then says, good. Then, for the next month, I'm gonna need to monitor your behavior as well as get you into a training on your quirk regimen. That way you can finally control your powers. Cause from what I was shown in that little skirmish we had with All Might and myself, you need to control your quirk if you're gonna be allowed into the public. Izuku looks to the direction of Aizawa and asks him what that's gonna do for him. As Aizawa would turn to him and tell him that he'll give him a second chance. Izuku, after hearing this words come from the mouth of Aizawa, would immediately have his resolve just engulfed with flames. He finally has a goal to aspire. He finally has something that he wants to do, and he now knows that he's going to be having to put in hours of work to control his quirk. Not only that, but he's going to just have to put work in in general because he wants to show Aizawa that he's not wasting his time on a nobody. Deku has been waiting on an opportunity his entire life, and he's not going to be wasting it. Not again. So, Izuku would decide that basically he's going to be training for the next month, under supervision of course, and would begin to get his things together, mastering his quirk a little bit more day by day, and learning more and more abilities as time goes on. Izuku never really thought too much about his quirk, and eventually one day he was given a sword. When he was given this small, like, blade thing, Izuku had an attack come at him, and when Izuku swinged the sword into the air to try to essentially, like, hit it back, it was almost as if that strange flame that was shooting at him let's just say that a flame a flame quirk person shot flames at him and izuku you know he grabbed the sword and he swung it into the air subconsciously it was just something that was engraved in his memory izuku simply let out the words full counter as the flames immediately ricocheted off of his blade in the air literally and just went straight back to the attacker which essentially ended up pretty much kind of burning him a little bit which izuku rushed over and asked if he was okay the guy immediately got up and began to pretty much tell Izuku not to worry about it, that he's fine, really. 
Thanks. Um, I'm going to go now. I need to switch my hero suit. And Izuku would pat the back of his head as he, you know, just begins laughing. Suddenly, Izuku realizes that he's finally enjoying using his quirk and having fun for the first time in forever. Q, time skip. Now we suddenly find ourselves about, let's say he was seven years old. So now I'm going to be saying it's been about six years. He's going to be like, okay, so seven, <laughs> let's say it's eight years, right? He's going to be like 14. And currently he's inside of the house of Aizawa. It's not an extravagant place. It's actually a small apartment, a condo. Izuku has a room. Aizawa has a room. And Izuku's usually alone by himself during the nighttime towards midday times of the day. So that's when Izuku's able to pretty much relax, watch TV, eat snacks. And also during the day is the time that he gets trained while Aizawa simply just sleeps all day. So pretty much Izuku is alone like most of the time but he now knows that he has a goal and that goal is to essentially make it to ua and make aizawa proud show him that the training that the trust that he put into him was well worth it because izuku is on his hero's journey and he's on a mission to become the greatest hero of all time of course at this current moment since izuku was adopted by aizawa it did go out to the media and many people are already aware of said fact that izuku is with aizawa you know what i mean everybody's kind of like Okay, so he's like little Mr. Big Shot. He's been trained by a pro hero all his life. He's probably going to be cocky, super powerful. And that's just the image that everybody's getting from him. But Izuku's actually really laid back, chill, and a bit perverted. Just because of the fact that he's the reincarnation of Meliodas. If I don't give that to him, I feel like I'm doing Meli a dis a disjustice like i'm not doing him justice you know what i mean so that all out of the way izuku's pretty much training every single day and pretty much got to the point in which meliotis is at by season one of the seven deadly sins you know obviously he's he has pretty great swordsman skills he also is able to use full counter he has a couple of things he doesn't he doesn't have the sword lost bane so unfortunately he's unable to multiply for now but he did put in a recommendation to the um the, the the ua to give him a nice little costume reminiscent of the outfit that meliotis has but he just kind of looks taller than him but it's still the same outfit not the bartender one but more or less the one with the white shirt you know the green undershirt and stuff like that is the outfit that izuku is going to be rocking and he's also going to be given the sword that meliotis has in the original seven deadly sins las vein so be hyped for that but as of now, he's currently just waiting for the recommendation exam to finally commence. And the day would eventually arrive, seeing as Izuku just counting down the days till eventually he gets to do that. He would go in and he would pretty much just destroy all of the markings that Aizawa had for him. I mean, at this point, everybody really knows that's in the hero community that Izuku is a lot stronger than All Might at this point. I mean, when it comes to like attacks that range from like quirked attacks he's able to use a repel like attack on those but when it comes to physical ones he has a bit of a harder time but due to the fact that he has increased strength and he also is very very skilled in combat it's almost as if izuku is able to you know kind of just like parry it off just like let it go by him not really care about it not only that, but when it comes to his demon form, he still has trouble controlling it, but he's able to snap back into it eventually, right? He he He's had a bit more luck when it comes to controlling his demon form, right? But all that aside, we basically jump into a moment of time where Izuku pretty much gets his acceptance letter, and Aizawa just looks towards Izuku, telling him that at school, he's not going to be treated like a son or even like he knows him. He's going to be treated just like all of the rest of his students. Izuku looks to Aizawa and says that he wouldn't have it any other way as he then looks at him and says pops and Aizawa looks back at him and he's like I told you to stop calling me that Deku just says that you know that's what he looks at him as you know one of his father figures and Aizawa just scoffs as he then says fine just um wake me up in the morning suddenly the next day comes by and izuku just sees aizawa passed out he then shakes him and aizawa gets up as his eyes go red and he's like why'd you wake me and izuku's like bro you told me to wake you up chill and aizawa's like oh right i did as suddenly izuku then goes on to pretty much get his outfit together and meet aizawa at school the very first day he's there about one hour ahead of schedule he's just having a little conversation with nezu nezu's sitting there on the chair like hmm izuku how, how are you today, young man? Izuku walks into the office and he's like, oh, yeah, Nezu, I'm doing great. And Nezu says, hmm, great, great, great. Would you like some tea? 
Zuko's like, um, sure, I'll take some tea. And Nez is like, oh, yeah, fine. Here's the finest tea. You know, we begin drinking and Nez is like, you know, I actually drink this tea to make my fur quite soft. It's impeccable. He's like, you, you should have a touch. And Izuku just awkwardly rushes over. He's like, mm, you know what? You actually are pretty soft. Suddenly Nez was like, yeah. And then Aizawa opens the door just to see Izuku petting Nezu on the head. And Aizawa's just like, is this a good time? Izuku looks at him and he's like, oh yeah, sure. It's the best time. It's, uh, it, there could not be a better time. Suddenly, Aizawa tells Izuku that he just has to have one last minute chat with Nezu alone. And Izuku understands that going to the classroom, just putting his head down and passing out. Eventually, all of the students end up walking into the classroom. And Aizawa picked up the sleeping habit from... I Izuku picked up the sleeping habit from Aizawa. Just because of the little fact that... I mean, Aizawa's always sleeping, right? So something from Aizawa had to have rubbed off on Deku. So let's just say that he's in the back of the classroom. He's, you know, he's passed out. His head's on the desk. Nobody could really recognize who he is except for Todoroki and Momo, who were both part of the recommendation exam. Todoroki's staring daggers at Deku like, huh, I'll get him. Like, you know, like just thinking to himself that... You know, Deku's nobody, you know, he's better than him, yada, yada, yada. But that's pretty much just the flow of thinking that Todoroki has at this current moment. But Izuku could care less. Izuku's passed out, and suddenly Aizawa would stand up as, you know, he begins unzipping his sleeping bag, and the students all immediately look up wondering, who's that? But Izuku's wide awake, and the second that Aizawa tells him what to do, Izuku doesn't question. He just walks out, and Aizawa looks to the rest of the students before saying, you should all follow his lead. Do exactly what he does you won't regret it. Deku from here goes to the changing room. You know, he begins just getting dressed. He shows off the abs, the chiseled chest, and you know, Izuku's just looking like an absolute beast. He basically has a Bakugo type body frame with a little bit more muscle, just a tad bit more, and it's a little bit more condensed, so he's as chilly a lot stronger than he looks. And Deku, you know, De Deku's just doing his thing, right? Eventually, they all make it outside, and Aizawa tosses the ball to Bakugo, who, of course, would win the um, practical exam and stuff like that. So he's going to be the one who throws the ball. But we all know who the real winner would be if Izuku was to take that practical exam. If Izuku was there, all I'm going to say is he would have literally gone through that and destroyed robots as if... Just like the scene when he ended up destroying the castle with Bond, you know, he was just arm wrestling. He literally would have just gone in and begin to essentially go berserk on all those robots. It wouldn't have even been a challenge. But Izuku was doing his absolute best during these little um, quirk apprehension tests that they had. So Izuku was not holding back. That's one thing that Aizawa has engraved in his head. Hold back when you have to. Don't hold back when you don't have to. And this is one of those moments where Izuku just doesn't have to hold back. So with the grip string test machine, he just shatters it. With the 50 meter dash, he clears it in record time. When it comes to the long jump, Izuku just lunged all the way to the sky and landed down way further than he was supposed to. When it comes to the ball throw, Izuku tapped into his demonic form for a brief instant just to throw the ball as hard as he physically could, snap back into reality, and then looked at his peers with a little bit of a devilish aura, but it calmed down almost immediately, and his peers were like, what was that? But Izuku just like smiles and walks to the back of the class. Bakugo's just over there gritting his teeth like, no way someone's better than me, right? You know, he's salty because he's thinking that somebody's going to threaten his masculinity, you know what I mean, saying? And so, you know, he just feels insecure at this moment because he knows that Izuku is a just a tank. And if you guys are wondering what Izuku will, does actually look like, I'm pretty sure I put up a picture of Izuku for the intro. If not, uh, you guys could check my community tab. There's a commissioned Deku artwork that I had actually paid for, which was for the thumbnail, but it just didn't fit as well as the image that I ended up using did. So yeah, it's probably going to be in the movie version of this when I do end up making that because I probably will. But that's besides the point. Anyways, though, what ends up happening following this situation is essentially Izuku is pretty much the one who gets first place. Now, obviously, we know that in the original Momo gets first place, so she still does get second. But the reason that Deku gets first is just because he shatters like every score for everything. Momo did great in everything because of her versatile quirk. But Izuku's quirk is just made for crushing dreams and just destroying people. He's a demon for crying out loud. So Izuku was definitely able to do his absolute best and just absolutely blow the competition out of the water with his powers his aura his presence honestly was enough 
to actually elevate others to do better. Izuku casually walks up to Uraraka and he's like, hey, how you doing? Uraraka is like, oh, ch wow, you, you're talking to me? Izuku's just like, yeah, of course, why wouldn't I be? And Uraraka is just all like, oh, well, you know, you know, she just starts talking and stuff. And Izuku's like, great, great, great. You know, he then goes on to pretty much squeeze, you know what I'm talking about, right? He starts squeezing it and Uraraka's like, what? You know, she jumps up into the air. She blushes heavily and Izuku looks at her and says, yep, you're pretty healthy. Aizawa immediately grabs him with a scarf and shoves him in. And he looks at him with those eyes and Izuku's like, it won't happen again. I swear to God, it won't happen again. And Aizawa just looks at Deku and just straight bang like right in the face right in the face just hits Deku straight in the jaw and you know sends him flying to the ground he's like I deserve that I suddenly Aizawa looks to him and tells him that he agreed he wouldn't do that Izuku says he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't hold back I mean look at her look at how she looks and Uraraka just starts blushing even harder she's like what you know what I mean and then Izuku's like I'll I'll leave her alone I promise Araraka after this just walks home like in a little bit of embarrassment you know she starts speed walking she sees Izuku from the corner of her eye and she begins you know walking as fast as she can Izuku looks at her and you know he begins catching up trying to apologize but Araraka just out of nowhere gets this anime girl super speed and just runs away so Izuku didn't even get the chance to apologize for what he did but he goes home and on his way there you know Mineta is following him slowly and he's like how dare you you know, Deku sees Mineta in the corner of an alleyway, and Mineta's like, how dare you touch Uraraka? That was for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Deku just looks back at him, and he's like, oh, well, do you want me to describe what it was? And Mineta goes, yeah. Suddenly, Zuku begins to talk to him, and they both begin to just perv out in that alleyway, you know what I mean? <laughs> they start sharing contacts, and Mineta and Deku just start texting, and, you know, he starts telling him about her. Mineta's all like, I'm gonna do it too, but to Momo. And Deku's like, I don't recommend it. The only reason that Aizawa let it slide for me was because, you know, I'm kind of his adopted son. And Mineta's like, wait, you're that kid? And Deku's like, yep. The one and only, suddenly Mineta understands everything. The picture is perfectly clear now. And he's like, all right, well, now I know not to mess with him. And, you know, he kind of understands that he won't even get to do that thing to Momo. But Deku says that he'll, you know, see what he can do. That he'll he'll try to get the attention of that Momo Yayorozu girl, saying he also noticed her as well. Izuku says that he's not going to be restrained to one woman and so you know the very next day rolls around and suddenly they're in the classroom when all my bursts in through the door and he's like i am here walking into the door like a normal person right he walks in he begins doing his monologuing and suddenly he reveals a button or a like a little remote on the back of his costume he clicks it he waits he shoots he misses psych no i'm just kidding but he does open the the wall he reveals that there's a bunch of costumes and the class is just like what you know what i mean like how would you react if you were in the class and you know out of out of nowhere these costumes just appeared right they're all hype they go get changed the little song starts playing it's all like my hero you know just starts playing in the background and everybody's just having a lit time honestly you know they start doing their thing and suddenly they basically find themselves all just outside it's all might begins to explain the rules right he's all like all right so there's teams and this is how it works Izuku, after hearing this, is like, great, great, great. And he actually ends up getting paired with Uraraka. After he gets paired with Uraraka, she begins blushing. And Izuku goes over towards her and begins to say, hey, uh, sorry about. But she's like, oh, don't worry. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, it wasn't even a big deal anyways. You know, she just starts thinking about Izuku. And, you know, Izuku's just sitting there with a smile on his face. He's like, great. Well, I hope we can do great on this little mission that we're going to go on. Uraraka's like, right, right, right. And, uh, and, you know, everybody else in the class is just like, ain't that going to be weird? Like, we all saw what he did yesterday. But it seems like to everybody, like, Uraraka didn't even care. So they're all like, uh, so maybe, maybe she doesn't care. Maybe, maybe she liked it. But Izuku just sitting there and his opponent, obviously, it's going to be Bakugo and Ida. Now, Bakugo doesn't call Deku Deku. So he's just going to rush in and, you know, guns blazing like Bakugo does. And he's pretty much just going to be screaming through the area where he's going to be trying to find Izuku. He's going to be like, damn it, you know, shooting explosions, trying to blast his way towards the direction of Deku. And Deku's just going to look at Bakugo, who's just shooting in with his explosions and shoots an explosion at Deku, mind you. It's a powerful one. It's a huge one. But Izuku just smiles and goes full counter as suddenly the wave of the explosion shoots back into Bakugo's face. And he's like just sent flying back, just wondering how 
how that just happened. But Bakugo begins to essentially... How do I put this? He begins to essentially rush back in towards the direction of Deku and goes to shoot another one, but more powerful than before, and it just happens again. The blast repels, and Bakugo begins to just like shoot back and land, finally realizing what happened. He repelled its attack. He begins to wonder how he did that, and he asks him, Hey, how'd you do that? As Deku just looks back to the direction of, you know, Bakugo, and he's like, I'm not telling you, like, like, I would be a fool to tell you. I'm, I'm not doing that, right? And suddenly, we just have, you know, um, Deku just being like, you know, chuckling and stuff like that. And, you know, Bakugo's just angry. He's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, he rushes in trying to beat Deku hand to hand, but it's just not happening. Deku begins to absolutely pummel Bakugo. It's like Bakugo feels as if he's fighting against a mountain. I don't know if you guys have ever gone through this experience, but I personally have. I'm a basketball player and I usually have to play against the taller person on the team just because the friends that I usually play with are like around 5'11 and since I'm 5'6 like six feet tall I look a little bit taller so I always have to play center right but basically I every now and then get to play against someone of equal height right it's fun you know we were even and then sometimes I have to play against a 6'7 monster who's absolutely jacked and looks like Hercules right and I try to push the dude but it's he's just not moving dude it, I don't get it but basically that's what that's what Bakugo's feeling he's going up against a mountain and he's just getting outclassed in every way right and, you know, Bakugo's doing his very best to try to do, you know, try to move him, try to win. But, it, dude, it's not working, like, at all. It's not. But, you know, it is what it is. And we basically get to a situation in time where Deku just wraps Bakugo up and he rushes up to the top of the building with Uraraka as, you know, he tells her to go towards the bomb. He grabs her by the hand and throws her at the bomb as, you know, she made herself weightless. She she comes into contact with the bomb before Ida could rush in with this reshipra burst and, you know, move it out of the way. And All Might just goes, hero team wins! Immediately following the crushing defeat from Bakugo to Ida... And then, you know, the winners obviously being Deku and Araka. We pretty much just cut to the scene where everybody's just kind of done with school. And Izuku's finally able to walk towards Uraraka and formerly be able to like really apologize. Like obviously he's said sorry before, but this time he's like really gonna like be like, hey, sorry about that. Like I have these tendencies. I'm I'm really sorry, you know, like hormones. And Uraraka looks at him, you know, she chuckles and she's like, Yeah, like I already forgave you. Don't worry about it. Just uh, don't let it happen again. You know, she's cheesing. She's teasing Deku, right? And the dude is just like, all right, sounds good, Uraraka. From here, he just pretty much goes on to, uh, how do I put this? Just, you know, just be like, all right, well, then I'll catch you later, right? They both dap each other up, and then they end up going off in their separate directions. When Deku gets home, he pretty much just gets there to see Aizawa just passed out on the couch. Deku sets his things down, and Aizawa just looks at him and says, hey, saw your performance today. He doesn't even open his eyes. He's like... You did a great job. You're proving that I was right to bet on you. Deku smiles and, you know, he goes towards his room only to, you know, he turns on his monitor. He puts his lotion on his desk. He puts his headphones on. You know, he begins to take off his pants and then he puts on his new pair because he's about to pass out. And, you know, he just needed to moisturize his hands and arms. You know what I mean? The dude needed to relax after a long day at UA, right? And from here, he just goes to sleep. He wakes up the next day, beat up, beat up, boom, normal school stuff, nothing interesting happens for about a week or so, I would say, considering how the MHA timeline flows, right? Because I'm pretty sure it's like a week after the Heroes versus Villains that they go to the USJ. So skip to that. And I'm just going to be saying that on this particular occasion, Deku's sitting in the back seat, right? Uraraka is one of the last people to get on. And it just so happens that a seat next to Deku is the only one that's pretty much available. So what happens here? Pretty much Deku is just sitting there. You know, he's looking out the window, not really worried about who's next to him. And Uraraka's like, hey, uh, this seat taken? Deku looks at her and he's like, oh, uh, no, nah, actually, not really. She looks back and she's like, oh, well, mind if I sit here? And Deku's like, no, 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 no. Uraraka then is all like, so what you doing and uh Deku's like sitting on a bus just like you and she's like oh no 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 I mean like here in in UA she begins to ask Deku why he's there and why he wants to become a hero Deku looks at her nonchalantly looks out the window looks back at her and is just like oh well that's a pretty simple question I want to prove that I could become a hero and I want to show a certain somebody that they were right to bank on me 
and to show that I could be more than a petty criminal. And, you know, she looks at him and she's like, petty criminal? What are you? And Deku's like, don't worry about it. What about you? And she's just like, oh, money. And Deku's like, I respect that. I mean, I, I would want to have money too. That's partially one of the reasons why I would also do it. And, you know, Uraraka's is like, oh, well, it's because we're struggling. And I'm like, trust me, I understand struggling. She then goes on to pretty much smile. And, you know, they both talk on their way to the USJ until eventually they find themselves inside. Bam. Purple Mist just appears in the middle of the room, and he's just like, hello, heroes, right? Suddenly, all the students are all like, whoa, you know, fake villains? And Aizawa is just like, bro, these kids are dumb. But he jumps in the way, you know, he jumps down towards the main villains, right? And he's like, 13, protect the kids, right? Suddenly, Kirishima and Bakugo rush in trying to, you know, hit Kurogiri, but they can't because he's missed and what happens next is pretty much Deku just looks at Kuragiri as you know he begins to pretty much try to use his portal ability but Deku just pretty much hits him with a no you uno reverse card and just goes full counter right suddenly the portal grabs Kuragiri and sends him like far to the one of the directions he was gonna send the students to and then Deku is just like whoa so he was gonna teleport people interesting after this, Deku pretty much goes on to look at the classroom and simply say to get out of there. They're like, the door's closed, and Deku's like, not a problem. As he then rushes towards it and pretty much punches it one time, just shattering the door, fending the, the, the floors just go off flying, right? And the students look back to Deku, look, 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 look at him, and they're like, what are you going to do? Deku goes, I'm going to take care of the mess. Somebody needs to help Aizawa, right? He looks at 13 and says, don't worry about him, that she knows how powerful he is, and you know 13 nods and she's like all right guys let's go curry gear didn't get the chance to even stop them and so he teleports next to shigaraki and just goes bad news the students it appears that they have left the facility shigaraki scratches his neck he's like no fair it's all that brat you know he, he releases the gnome when he's like no mu kill him suddenly this gigantic like seven to eight feet tall nomu just comes rushing in at him this giant black bird <laughs> oh my god that's not in mad <laughs> Oh my god, I don't even care. But anyways, basically the gigantic Nomu just rushes towards the direction of Deku, right? And, <laughs> bro, I can't, I can't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, usually I only make those types of jokes with the boys, but, hey, it slipped out. <laughs> nah, but for real though, no boys, basically what ends up happening is, um, we have this gigantic Nomu, right? It's rushing towards the direction of Deku. And he goes over to throw a punch, right? He throws the punch at Deku. He pretty much sends Deku back flying. And, or actually, nah, 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 nah. De Deku ain't no, Deku ain't no punk. He ain't finna just get knocked out like that. Nah. Deku straight stands there like a G and takes it. Like, the punch hits him and he's like, so, you gonna throw the punch yet? Deku then says, my turn. His eyes change to a demonic aura and just, bam, just straight whacks the nomu one good time sends it crashing into the wall and the nomu pretty much has its danger sense just going off the rails shigaraki orders it to rush at him and even though the nomu doesn't want to it just rushes at deku again deku grabs his sword that he pretty much specifically ordered from the heroes which is essentially lost vein as he goes on to multiply himself and rush in just slashing using the 1000 divine sword slash right the nomu gets split into hundreds of pieces actually pause thousands and Deku just stands there so Nomu just fell to pieces following this Shigaraki looks to Deku like pretty much begins to shit himself and is like Kurigiri now as you know Shigaraki teleports out the portal closes but as it closes Deku is right behind Shigaraki just like hmm, what a nice place you guys got here Shigaraki turns around and he's like what are you but Deku grabs him by the face and then you and then like well one of his arm changes into the demonic aura as he grabs Kurigiri as well and just slams them both onto the ground Shigaraki begins to pretty much grab at Deku's arm you know five fingers and he's like <laughs> you're gonna die kid suddenly we see Deku just not be affected he, he's just like you think some weak puny quirk like this is gonna do anything to me i'm a demon as he just smashes shigaraki's face into the ground even more and it's at this moment that all for one realizes something dangerous is going on right he's like his even he knows not to go over there near deku because it's like that's pretty much a death sentence so all for one is just in his room he's like freaking out he's like oh shigaraki's dead bro i'm, I'm not fighting that man he just he soloed the nomu he, he shigaraki's decay is not shig all for one wants none of that smoke 
you don't really want to smoke. You ain't about that, you know, like like that basically. You know, like a really cool music starts playing in the background, and we basically just have Deku just like looking like a total badass. This would be like an anime edit clip if we like had something like that around this time, right? And uh, boys, the 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 story's about to not make sense for the next like 20 seconds just because I'm texting my girl real quick. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? I, I don't know. Just just give me a second, boys. All right, boys, I'm back. Anyways, though, so pretty much what ends up happening is Deku, after, you know, grabbing Shigaraki and Kurogiri, just knocks both of them out and pretty much just calls the police. He's like, yeah, I don't really know where I'm at, but uh, just ask Aizawa to track my uh, phone. Should be able to find me. Authorities arrive and Shigaraki and Kurogiri, you know, they're thrown in the slammer. Deku's praise for all of this. He goes viral in the news and Deku's just the talk of the town. Eventually, about a week would go by after the students return to school. And when everybody goes to observe the competition, everyone's all focused on Deku. You know, he walks out of the classroom. He's the same stature that Deku would be in the original. I think I said he was taller, but I actually want to make him the same stature he was. He walks out and people are like, he's puny. Like, what? what, what? And, you know, people are like, don't don't be, you know, um, don't be fooled by his height. The dude is a, a beast. And Deku just walks by and he's like, oh, so you guys are the competition? Do your best. You know, he walks away and suddenly everybody's just like, doesn't seem that threatening. But Deku just walks off with a smile on his face and Ida catches up to him, asks him, why didn't you, you know, like, why, why do you act this way? Why don't you sh like act more superior like Bakugo? You have all this strength and for some reason you're nonchalant, non-caring and humble about it. Why is that, Izuku? And Deku looks back to Ida. He sits down. He begins to munch on his food on the ground because all the tables were full. And he's like, well, honestly, Ida, I really could not care less what other people think about me. As long as I know that I'm a good person and that I can handle myself in the real world. Ida just goes, what do you mean the real world? And Deku's just like, You'll find out someday, Lita. You've probably lived a pretty privileged life considering your attitude and your family name. You're an ingenium, aren't you? Ida's like, what? How did you? And he's like, I've met your brother. He's a great guy. Um, I feel like you have a lot of his qualities, but at the same time, it feels like you're trying to overcompensate for some. Maybe pull back just a little bit, Ida. Ida's like, you know what? You're kind of right. Maybe I should pull back just a little. Deku from here just goes on a pat eat on the back and he's like, well, I'll catch you later, bud. I got to go. He goes off and, you know, uses the bathroom. He drops a uh, a nuke and suddenly he makes his, it, it's, it's a demonic nuke. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. But basically, Deku just goes over towards the direction of where the, whatchamacallit, goes towards the direction of where the, uh, um, 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 <sighs> brain freeze okay what what was i gonna say oh yeah he goes towards the direction of where you know aizawa's classroom would be and he goes on to ask him if you know like um if if he thinks anything regarding the ua sports festival aizawa tells deku that as for the sports festival he wants him to do his best and you know to hold back only if it in involves students getting injured deku looks towards aizawa and he's like so the guy who taught me not to hold back is suddenly trying to teach me to hold back how ironic as I was like, don't push your luck, kid. And suddenly Deku's like, ah, you know what? You're right, you're right, you're right. He walks away and suddenly he begins to pretty much get followed by a certain individual. This person would obviously be Araka and she's just wondering what Izuku's up to, right? You know, nothing bad particularly, but she's just there watching Deku. We're gonna be skipping over to the next day and the next day they're pretty much at the UA Sports Festival. Cause why not? I could not be bothered to cover anything else, right? They're there. And when it comes to the race, boys, I'm pretty sure you guys know who's gonna win. I'm not about to, I'm not about to go through the trouble of making this difficult race where Baku goes close, you know, Todoroki's close as what? Well. Nah, Deku stomps. He's too fast. He's just too fast for them. The second that Todoroki went to slam his foot, by the time that his foot was halfway down, Deku was pretty much just blasted off, and everybody got blown back. Shigura, uh, Todoroki's eyes shattered in an instant, and Deku just flew towards the direction of the finish line and landed in a similar fashion to when the Seven Deadly, I mean the Ten Commandments, landed in front of Meliodas, and you know he was facing his ops. But basically something very, very similar to that certain situation would go down. And essentially all that happens following this is Deku gets the 10 million point headband. Now, I hate covering the cavalry battle, so I'm not going to cover it. And when it comes to the one-on-one -on -one battles, including Deku versus Shinzo, Deku just stomps him. 
I'm sorry, but I don't care what anybody says. I doubt Shinzo's mind control thing would work on Deku. Somebody who's so nonchalant that doesn't care about people's insults because that's how he wants his personality to be on the outside would not react to somebody saying, oh, you think you're so good because you have a powerful quirk or anything like that. Deku, in fact, does not care. So he just rushes you like, boop. He hits Shinzo one good time and, you know, knocks him out. Second battle, obviously Todoroki, but this time Todoroki doesn't have that information in his head thinking, oh, he must be all my secret love child. No, nah, instead, he pretty much just tells Deku that from a, you know, looking at things, you know, from a different angle, it appears that Deku is stronger. But, and hear this, but, but Todoroki is going to do all he can to pretty much show Deku that he's not a pushover and he's going to defeat him only using half of his power. Deku looks at him and he's like, all right, buddy, you do your best. And he taps him on the shoulder. Todoroki gets mad and, you know, his, his, his cold side begins to flare up. And Deku's like, whoa, buddy, didn't mean, to, didn't mean to push your buttons there. My bad. Todoroki's like, sure. And he says, I'll see you at the ring, Deku. As suddenly, you know, just Izuku just walks towards the direction of the outside, bumps into Bakugo and he's like, oh, how you doing? And Bakugo's like, just so you know. He's not the only one that's going to crush you. So if he doesn't beat you, I will. But let's just hope Icy Hot over there is not able to defeat you. Deku looks to Bakugo and he's like, uh, noted. All right, so now I have two people that are gunning for me. What's going to happen next? He walks towards the direction of where his friend groups at Uraraka and Ida. And they both basically go on to ask him, you know, how he's doing today. Deku looks towards Uraraka and, you know, she's smiling at him. She's giving him all the cues. Deku, you know, he walks next to Uraraka. And, you know, when they're walking towards the direction of the stadium, Izuku's just like, so, uh, how do you feel about your match? Uraraka's like, honestly, I'm feeling great. I, th I think I might win. And Deku's like, you don't gotta lie to me. Cheer up. As he smacks her one good time on the you-know-what. And she's like, oh, you know, she gets quiet. Her face grows red. And Izuku's like, oh, oh I'm sorry. I I'm so sorry. Uraraka's like, it's fine. You know, she rubs the sides of her hair a little bit. And suddenly we then hear Izuku Midoriya up to the stage. And Izuku just looks back at it and he's like, well, that's my cue. Gotta go. Izuku would have run his way towards the direction of the stage with one thing on his mind. Crap, 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 crap. I can't believe I did that again. He stands there. He looks at Todoroki. You know, Todoroki looks back at him. He's looking all serious. Like, can't wait to fight Midoriya. You know, he's excited. You know, his blood is pumping. He's wanting to show the world that he can beat him. And Deku was pretty much just standing there preoccupied with what he just did to Uraraka and how she's going to perceive him, saying that she's probably going to think he's a perv or a creep now. And Izuku was just like, ah, I did it again. Well, I guess I got to deal with the consequences when I see her again. And Midnight would just go, get started. Immediately, all of them would begin to like watch attentively. And by all of them, I mean the crowd, right? As Todoroki goes, bam, you know, he slams his foot on the ground and the ice glacier just, poof, it shoots at Deku's direction, right? I know you guys don't need sound effects, but uh, I'm just in a good mood. But anyway, so basically Todoroki shoots the gigantic ice glacier, right? Now Deku sees this thing coming at him and Izuku pretty much just grabs, um, just grabs his, oh wait, he doesn't have a sword. Mm. He pretty much goes on to just punch, like just bam, 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 shatter the iceberg and pretty much walk towards the direction of Todoroki slowly. Todoroki can hear the ice glacier slowly being broken and Deku is just punching straight through it, just shattering the ice, getting it out of his way as Todoroki is just questioning how Izuku is doing that. Izuku from here gets in front of Todoroki and Todoroki would try to shoot another beam of ice just to get Deku back. But Deku appears in front of his face, grabs him by the collar of his shirt and says, why would you do that? As if I can't reach you in an instant. And suddenly Todoroki looks back at Izuku and is like, what? And Deku just bam, headbutt straight to the head of Todoroki. And let me just say it this way. Todoroki gets knocked out. This dude is, he's gone. He's done. He's on the ground. He's out cold and he's not getting back up. I'm sorry. It's not happening. But yeah. Todoroki gets knocked out and um that's the end of that story so we then jump over to the next battle which is pretty much Deku versus Bakugo however before that Deku would go visit Uraraka in the infirmary where he catches a glimpse of her well crying right 
She's she's tearing up because of the fact that she didn't win the sports festival and she feels like she disappointed her parents. After she gets off the phone, Izuku sits down and says, I wanted to apologize again, but then I saw that you felt bad. And he just sits down next to her and he's like, what's wrong? Araraka looks back at him and, you know, she begins tearing up, crying into Deku's arms. Deku wipes the tears out of her face. You know, he turns his Riz mode on. He was all like, oh, yeah, I got her vulnerable, right? <laughs> I'm just playing. But seriously, though, Izuku basically goes on to pretty much talk to her a little bit and tell her that everything will be fine. Then they have a little bit of a moment where they just look at each other and Deku gives her the biggest smile. And Uraraka is just like comes in for a hug and and Deku just he sits there he just accepts the hug following this he looks at Araraka and tells her that he's gonna do his best in his next match to promise to pretty much get revenge for her and Araraka says she knows he will as Deku goes out towards the direction of the stadium and pretty much begins to essentially put on a show the second that Bakugo shoots an explosion towards the direction of Deku Deku would just go full counter and say can you not learn Bakugo now you guys might be wondering, how is he able to say full counter if he doesn't have a tool in it? Let's just say he grabs a piece of debris from one of the explosions and just waves it in the air. He's like, full counter, right? So that happens, and Bakugo then gets angry. He's like, how could you do that? Like, I forgot, right? He then lunges back again and powers up a gigantic explosion, except it's not like intended to actually hit Deku. He hits it towards the ground so that it could create a smoke screen. And he then lunges into the direction of Deku, throwing punches, kicks, and all that stuff, right? Now, Deku is pretty much tanking this attack. It's hurting him a bit, right? But he's tanking it. And Bakugo eventually gets so close that he shoots an explosion right at Deku's face. Deku would just smirk underneath the rubble and smoke and say, Revenge counter! As all of the damage that Bakugo just inflicted onto Deku just gets sent back twice as hard at Bakugo. And Bakugo is just... You know, he's exploded to the side of the arena. He leaves a crater the size of his body there. And Bakugo is just sitting there wondering how he got to this situation. Regretting all of his life decisions that led him to that moment. But following this, Izuku is awarded with the first place medal. Bakugo second, Todoroki third. And that's just how the cookie crumbled. But regardless of said fact, actually no, it would be Tokiyami third. Sorry about that. But... Regardless of how the cookie crumbles, once Izuku pops up with his medal, Uraraka is all like, you did it, Izuku. Like, that's pretty great. Izuku looks at Uraraka and he's like, yeah, it is pretty great, right? And, you know, they laugh. Ida comes in and, you know, he's like, congratulations, Izuku. Immediately, Deku could feel some strange energy in Ida and he begins to wonder what's up with him. He immediately asks him and Ida just waves him off. He's like, ah, don't worry about it, Izuku. Like, it, it's not, it's nothing crazy, Right. Following this, the next day, they find themselves back at school, and all of them are pretty much talking about their performances. Uraraka seems to be fine after the incident, and Deku, as well as everybody else, are told to essentially pick their hero names, as well as, you know, the internship that they want to go to. Obviously, Zuku's going to be interning with Haizawa, so he's going to be doing more or less learning how to run a, learning how to run a, um, a hero agency he's going to be learning how to apprehend villains how to jump in when the situation is needed and how to analyze a crime scene right that's pretty much what deku is going to be doing during his time with aizawa when it comes to his pro hero name his name is going to be dragon sin meliotis that's going to be his name you could call him meliotis for short but that's going to be the name that izuku chose to go with everybody's like that's actually a pretty interesting name and deku's like thanks Suddenly, everybody begins to pretty much pack their stuff, and you know, about three days later, they all find themselves at their respective interns. Deku sent in a text to Uraraka, and Aizawa just peeps over Deku's shoulder, and he's like, you know, you have been getting pretty close to that girl. When are you going to finally tie the knot? I mean, I know you already have been uh, up to some malicious activities recently, Izuku. And Deku just, you know, he's like, ah, don't, don't say that. Like, it's, it's not even like that. Aizawa's like, you know it is, Deku. And from here... Deck was like, why'd you call me that? And as I was like, I don't know, I heard them calling you that. And it sounds pretty fun. Deku goes, it literally means can't do anything. And as I was like, exactly, Deku. As Deku gets a little irritated, but he's like, eh, whatever. And suddenly the internship process begins. Deku would pretty much go out nighttime, monitor the streets, and would pretty much help Aizawa pretty much take down any and all villains that they came across. 
it would be a pretty smooth week for Deku. But Ida, Ida's not gonna have a sweet week. I'm telling y'all boys, Ida is dumb being a hero. Cause, cause first of all, there is no Nomu attack, right? So wait, there's no Nomu attack. So Manuel doesn't have to just let Ida run off. He's actually able to chase after him and stop Ida from rushing at the hero killer Stain. I'm going to be saying that instead Ida and Manuel are there and Manuel when he sees the hero native on the ground he tells Ida to grab native and get out of here as fast as possible. That the first priority on their list should be saving him and that their own survival and that his survival doesn't matter. That he's under his care and that he's making sure he goes back to see another day. Ida looks at him and he's like, no, I won't do that. And Manuel punches him straight in the face and says, do you think your brother would have wanted you to die? And, you know, Ida, he finally snaps back and he runs away and Manuel loses his life to the hero killer. The hero killer tells him that it was a valiant effort, but he will die. And so Manuel dies. Tragic. It should have been Ida, but it is what it is. And basically... Ida goes back to school knowing that it was his fault that a pro hero died. So he pretty much ends up resigning as a pro hero. Uh, I feel like Ida would do something like that where he's like, it was my fault that somebody died. Like, I have to give up. And then the entire class would be like, no, Ida, it wasn't your fault, right? Something like that. It just feels like such an Ida thing to do. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys know what I mean, right? But regardless of said fact, they all return back to school and Ida and, uh, you know, Deku and Uraraka hang out. And Ida can kind of sense those strange energy between Uraraka and Deku going around. And he's like, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go hang out with them. You know, he goes to hang out somewhere else and Uraraka and Deku hang out, right? They talk a little bit and they begin to get a little bit more than just friends connection. They're still, they're flirting around a little bit, but they're not like kissing or like hugging, you know, like straight away they just hang out a bit more than usual right eventually all of them would be told about the final exams and all of them would end up studying for them Uraraka and izuku would you know they would study together and everybody else would do their own things right deku pretty much ends up helping Uraraka with their confidence boost and eventually the final exam would come where deku has to face off against all might now obviously all might can't light a candle to izuku i mean we saw what deku did to the nomu so it's just it's not gonna happen so All Might immediately tries to fight Izuku. You know, Bakugo's on Deku's team. Bakugo's like, oh, don't get in my way, Deku, right? But Deku just uses his, um, he splits himself into multiple parts and all of them rush towards All Might except for the real one that would simply lunge towards the exit, not wanting to hurt All Might too bad. And that's pretty much how they pass. Bakugo gets angry. He's like, how could you do that, Deku? I wanted to fight All Might at his best. And you stop that. You know, he he grabs him by the collar and Deku looks at him with his demonic eyes popping. He's like, you know, unless you want to go home in an arm brace and an entire full body cast, I would recommend you let me go. All Might gets behind them and he's like, young Bakugo, I would let him go. And Bakugo turns around angry and shoots an explosion at All Might. All Might grabs his arm and then pretty much just with an angry expression on his face says, come with me. And pretty much Bakugo gets a failing score just because of what he just did to All Might. So good riddance. And he also gets suspended from UA for the entire forest training cap thing just because you don't do that to a teacher, right? But essentially they go to the forest training camp and nothing happens. I know you guys were probably expecting for me to say that during the forest training camp, the villains attack, but because Shigaraki isn't there, he's not exactly there to launch the full scale attack. Not only that, but um, how do I put this? Uh, the main villain, which is all, all for one, is kind of scared of Meliodas, aka Deku. So he's not exactly going to be rushing there and having a, a, a you know, a, a spasm over trying to go get Deku or All Might. He just leaves them be. And so the clash just progresses like normal. More time for Izuku and Uraraka to get along. And obviously they would end up having their good moments here and there where they just find each other, you know, when they're coming out of the hot springs. Deku looks at Uraraka and he's all like, oh, you look good. And Uraraka's like, thanks, you know, you too. You know, she walks away and the girls of UA are like, teehee, you know, you know how girls are, you know what I'm saying? But basically they start teasing Uraraka and everybody's like you guys should just seal the knot i mean it's been obvious he's liked you since you know what he did araka's face goes red and she's like yeah i kind of miss it and she immediately covers her mouth and everybody's like "Ooh, we caught you in a 4k suyu takes a picture and araka just begins floating in the air right 
But Deku is back with the boys and he's just sitting there and they're talking to him about how he raised up Baraka. And they're like, you know, I am kind of jealous, Kaminari would say. As Deku just begins talking and he's like, yeah, she does look pretty good. From here, they go back to school because nothing happens. Provisional license exam, yada, yada, yada. That's boring. I'm going to skip it. And we now find ourselves in the middle of the, uh, what, what, what arc comes after this? Like, it's the overhaul arc, right? The overhaul arc. Something I completely forgot to mention was the fact that, you know, All For One did lose his minion. So now he needs somebody else to work with. Who do you think he's going to work with? Yeah, overhaul. It just makes sense. I mean, when I was writing the story, I wasn't thinking of doing that. But as the thing progressed, I realized, hey, overhaul, All For One. Imagine if both of them work together, that would be pretty lethal. So all for one would begin to pretty much work alongside him. And so both of them would begin creating that, you know, quirk destruction thing, right? They would end up, of course, end up actually creating it. And what would basically end up happening is Mirio would end up fighting the classroom just like in the original. Now, I'm going to spare you guys the details just because Izuku does inevitably end up defeating Mirio. And Mirio does, of course, offer him, um, you know, a little internship opportunity with Izuku, right? So pretty much what ends up happening is Izuku goes over to, you know, the little opportunity. And he would actually, this time around, when Mirio bumps into Overhaul, well, what would end up happening is pretty much Deku goes on to essentially say that he got to go use it so Mirio would wait for him outside that alleyway and Aerie would bump into him she would be scared and overhaul would come in you know he would take her back and when Deku's done Mirio would tell him all about it and Deku would immediately grab Mirio and tell him why didn't he help that girl as Mirio's like I can't risk the operation and Deku punches Mirio in the face and he's like you let that little girl continue to get tortured when you could have saved her you're no hero. He begins rushing into that alleyway looking for overhaul, but he was gone. And he would end up going back to the, uh, like, NIDA agency, only to find out that all the heroes would be called for a full-scale attack on the overall household. They would do so, and eventually Deku and Mirio would be the first ones to arrive there. And when Mirio's fighting against overhaul, it goes pretty even until All for One comes in and just begins going great job he then shoots tendrils at the direction of mirio which deku gets in the way and just shatters you know he just bam he cuts it and cuts those tendrils right all for one would see deku and he would say so you're that kid who's been causing me problems he immediately would begin to shoot an air powered blast at the direction of deku and deku would not even be sent back flying he's literally standing there his hair would just begin flowing in the wind and deku would say i am suddenly overhaul would say i knew those attacks would have no impact on you so i'm using this and he shoots him with a quirky racer bullet right mirio tries to get in the way to dodge it he's like no but deku just hits mirio out of the way and he's like it won't do anything it hits him and izuku just looks towards the direction of all for one as he's like was that supposed to tickle his eyes were turned to his demonic state as he blitzes overhaul and grabs him by the head and just bam slams him into the wall he then grabs overhaul by his leg and be pretty much begins to ragdoll him throws him up into the air and goes one thousand divine slashes and just cuts overhaul into thousands of little pieces right suddenly he looks back at overhaul and says and you you have it even worse you did horrible things to that little girl and i'm gonna make sure that you know what it feels like overhaul waves his hand into the air and is trying to overhaul deku but deku would simply say full counter and the attack would overhaul overhaul right and he just begins to pretty much disintegrate in the ground he dies gg that's the end of the story psych i lied after this small event happens what pretty much ends up going down is deku would finally have to face the final boss asking Uraraka out <laughs> he would do so and obviously Deku and Uraraka would end up kind of going out on their first date you know you know what I'm saying and eventually a couple of months would pass and Deku and Uraraka would you know they would begin studying if you know what I mean hitting the books absolutely beginning to get to know each other and connecting on a more spiritual level if you get what I'm saying I knew you guys were waiting for that I, I literally knew it so I couldn't leave you guys without it because I, I know some of you some of you weirdos y'all wanted it but <laughs>
it is what it is. But yeah, boys, that's pretty much going to be the conclusion to what if Deku had uh, Meliodas' powers or reincarnation or whatever you want to call it. That's been it for me today, guys. If you guys enjoyed today's video at any moment, make sure you guys slap that like button, share with a friend, and leave a comment down below because I will be taking attendance. That said, I love each and every single one of you guys. It has been your boy Zether, and I am out. Peace.